Welcome to Turtle Country. These ancient reptiles have been around a lot longer than us, more than 100 million years in fact. The strongest turtles also outlive most of us, with some reaching 100 years old. For tens of thousands of years, we've shared the land and sea with these beautiful marine creatures that provide a valuable traditional food source and help keep the balance of nature. Turtles provide a link through time, but that link could be lost forever within decades if we don't protect them. The odds are stacked against these reptiles and it is estimated that only one in a thousand make it to adulthood. The loss of nesting habitat through climate change, predation by feral pigs and marine rubbish have seen turtle numbers decline dramatically in recent decades. Here on the Western Cape York Peninsula in far north Queensland, local rangers are tackling these problems head on. These rangers are working together through the Western Cape Turtle Threat Abatement Alliance, or WACTA, to ensure the turtles can survive and thrive for generations to come. There are seven types of marine turtles in the world. Globally, they are recognised as threatened species. The Western Cape York Peninsula coastline is considered internationally significant nesting habitat for the conservation of the endangered olive ridley and hawksbill turtles and vulnerable flatback turtles. Australia is the only place in the world where flatback turtles breed and dig their nests. Uh, my name is Cameron Wilson. Um, I work for the Pudumbo Ranger. Uh, we're working on Crab Island's project, uh, turtle monitoring. We, we tag like probably about 100 turtles a night. Crab Island is the biggest flatback rookery in the world. Ashling that get eaten by um, ghost crab and uh, seabirds, crocodile. The nests don't get predated on the island, but the Ashling get eaten by birds, crabs and crocodile on the island. The turtle's treacherous journey through life begins at sea, with the male and female mating offshore, close to the nesting beaches where they were born. She's been at sea for around 30 years, never returning to shore in that time. Once she's mature, the female turtle mates between every two and eight years, depending on her age and the environmental conditions. Several weeks after mating, using an incredible internal compass and her instincts, the female turtle will miraculously find her way back to the beach where she began her journey all those years ago to dig an egg chamber and begin the next generation. It's a slow and careful process, which can take up to an hour. It's really good like, to see, see these turtles come, coming up and laying, um, nesting next to each other and see, see all the sand. Is, the turtles are flicking the sands over and trying to find that, um, that perfect spot to lay, that, lay their nest. Because if the nest if it's not perfect, well, then they'll probably try and find another place to lay their, lay their eggs, yeah. Sometimes we, when you see the turtle comes up and they, they started digging their nose down, they sort of like going down and swimming in the water, like, but they're swimming in the sand going down and just to find a moist place to start digging. If, if they can find that moist place, then the, they probably won't make that, um, that tunnel for, to lay, that, lay, that, lay the eggs. Having found the perfect spot, the magic begins to happen. The female lays between two and five clutches of eggs in one nesting season. Most turtles lay around 100 eggs in each nest, but the flatback only lays half that amount. That's because their eggs are bigger than any other turtle species. With the turtles spending most of their life at sea, the rangers use this rare opportunity to take some measurements and tag them so they can be monitored year after year. Turtle work is a different experience you gotta have. It's more about watching your back, what are you doing and stuff like that. You gotta be aware of the crocs, where you're tagging, just in case by a snake, be careful. With the hard work done, it's time for the turtles to cover up the new nest and hope for the best. This mum won't wait around to see her babies hatch. They're all on their own. The next seven weeks are a critical time for the new generation of turtles. 
and when they're most vulnerable. My name is Fitzroy Lawrence. I am I'm a Kanya Ranger. Uh, my job is to monitor turtles here for Kanyama, uh, part of Wakta. And um, so I actually come down here to Topsy and monitor the turtle nest. The nesting starts about May to September. Just come down and monitor the turtle three times a, a week, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Just make sure the um, nest is not um, predated by pigs of Buena. Uh, the species of turtles on the beaches here, we get the flatback and um, the, also the olive ridleys nest on our beaches here in Lipa. Usually if we find a nest that's been predated, we'll go along, count all the shells, dig up the nest, see if there's any other um, shells left in the, in the nest. But um, unfortunately this morning, we found about 112, 115 eggs that's been um, fully predated by a dingo. Dingoes are only one of the threats to the incubating turtles. I want to come down to the beach, travel on the beach and just check for turtle nests, tracks, see if they laid any eggs. If they do, we just protect them. Turtle got turtle cages put over the nest, protect them from guanas and pigs. And they're a bit of a pest at the moment. So all the nice places we have or had are getting destroyed by pigs, digging up all over the area and eating whatever comes in their road. Feral pigs have been a huge problem in this area for a very long time. It took me a while to figure out what was going on. I went up to the beach here at Christmas where the main nesting area is in 2007 and the whole beach had been ploughed from the high water mark to the tree line. It was just absolutely destroyed. Um, there was pigs everywhere, uh, so there was very little nest success at all. I think um, about three years ago, uh, we all got together, the, the different coordinators as the ranger groups come online, and we started talking about how we might be able to manage it a bit better. Aerial culling of feral pigs has been one method used to help control numbers of this introduced pest, giving the turtles and the land a better chance. What the aerial control is to get outside contracts coming in and doing all the aerial shooting, but now there's about four of us qualified to do it through the Ranger program and we've got and CASA as well, so we can carry a discharge from aircraft and the air's were more better for us in the long run instead of getting in contractors. With the pigs posing such a problem, some of the Rangers came up with a new idea to protect the turtle nests. We designed an aluminium cage to actually go over the nest to, to stop the predation by pigs. Um, our trials last year, it was 100% successful. We had no predation by pigs or goannas on any of the nests that were protected. Um, it, these things really do work, so the next stage for us was instead of getting a contractor to, to actually make them, uh, we started to fabricate them ourselves. So, um, this, the, these cages were responsible for a 400% increase in nest hatchling success rate. The way they work is when we, when we are on the beach uh, doing our monitoring, we find a new nest, we actually um, locate the nest chamber, chamber, put a little stick or a mark on it, place the cage over the top of the nest chamber so that we get equal distance all the way around it, then pull the cage to one side, dig a trench around the, the nest chamber, um, shovel width wide, we place the cage in the sand so that the, 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 the bottom of this opening here is level with the sand. Uh, we then put a peg in each corner, a 900mm long timber peg and hammer it in. Um, it's then backfilled. The idea with the, the gap at the top is that when the baby turtles emerge from the nest chamber, uh, it's not too much of a battle for them to, to, to actually climb through the gap there and some trail cam footage uh, that was shot last year. It actually does work. It's, it's a good idea. The cages are constructed out of aluminium for a few reasons. The main one is that uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't interfere with the turtles' um, magnetic homing ability. So as all the researchers are saying that they'll come back to nest at the same beach where they were born. Uh, the other reason is that it's durable, it doesn't rust. Um, yeah, they're pretty tough, so I expect to get 10 years or more service out of each cage. Yeah, uh, last year, well, we Caged a few up, 
down the um, south side, yeah, and then there were pigs and guanas. There were tracks everywhere trying to get in, but yeah, never. None of them succeeded, yeah, because yeah, because of uh, the mesh, yeah, pretty good thing. The cages, yeah, real happy with the cages, yeah, because big results out of them, yeah. Better than um, using just a piece of plastic or something, yeah, just helps, helps with everything, yeah, like keeping out the pigs and, yeah. We get big results in the end, like with little hatchlings coming out, yep. And we save a lot of nests, yeah. And we've seen a lot of difference with the, um, with all the pig control that we're doing. There's a lot less tracks and a lot less predation. There's been a visible increase well, in, the, in the native wildlife and also there's a lot less damage to the swamps. Um, more long neck turtles, more freshwater tucker. Yeah, so it's definitely improved the, the way the land is now to what it was 10 years ago. When we're flying around doing our culling, um, you can see that some of the swamps have very little, if any, damage at all, whereas um, they were totally wrecked five years, six years ago. So it's definitely benefiting the, the environment for sure. One of the Earth's oldest living creatures could die off in our lifetime unless we take responsibility for our actions. Discarded fishing nets, plastic rubbish and boat propellers are the turtles' modern enemies. During 2015 alone, Wacta Rangers detected 128 ghost nets along the Western Cape York Peninsula, the majority near Mapoon. Um, with the marine debris, we collect um, gas balls that have been washed up, uh, light bulbs, little drinking bottle um, that it's very explosive. Um, we, before we touch it, we have to ring, you know, in quarantine first. The rubbish we pick up on the beaches are um, from um, other countries, not from locals or, you know, around the other Cape communities. They're foreign objects. Our sense of adventure has also led more of us into turtle nesting habitat. Part of the ranger's work to protect turtles involves education putting up signs and making visitors aware of their vulnerable neighbours. What are the people are doing in making a threat, um, driving over turtle nest, um, predating the turtle nest, interfering with turtles on our beaches while they're nesting. The people are interfering with the hatchlings on our, on our beaches as well. Yeah, taking photos, picking them up, um, yeah, just disturbing them and stuff. When people come down to Penny Father, uh, we would like to people just to leave the nest alone. Um, drive around them, leave the shuttles alone, leave the hatchlings alone. There's some sacred country there not to be touched. And the bike, they're coming in with their four wheelers and motorbikes and ripping through the place and riding on the beach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, we're gonna try and stop that too. They're coming and fishing, fishing only. Just come in with your boats, not with any four wheeler or bikes, mm -hmm. any bikes. There's camp one, two, and three and four, and um, I just go along and actually talk to them and make sure that they don't, when they drive along the beach, they actually be aware of, of the pegs actually in there with the nest and that, so not to drive near the beaches or, or, or whatnot with their quad bikes or, they, or the vehicles because um, there's tail nesting there and, and that. But we actually, we have a sign in place too as well to, to make them aware of Nesting turtles, Danny. Tackling so many threats along a remote 700 kilometer stretch of coastline between the Mitchell River and Pajinka is a big job. Under the Western Cape Turtle Threat Abatement Alliance, ranger groups have joined forces to fight for the survival of these ancient species, building on the work they have been doing for many years in their own communities. Wacta, the Western Cape Turtle Threat Abatement Alliance, has been going since 2013. Um, we're in partnership with NRM, Natural Resource Management. Uh, we work with Pompara, Konyama, Mapun, um, Northern Peninsula area. So there's five of us here in the Western Cape trying to look after turtles. How, how we work in partnership with the other four communities, we have two general meetings a year and um, how, how we could help each other make a better home for the turtles here on our beaches. 
um, work, working together, share different ideas. WACTA has, has sort of been a bit of a godsend for us because we now can, um, all the ranger groups are doing the same thing but slightly differently and we're, we're slowly sorting, sorting out what does work and what doesn't work. It's a partnership that's working. All last year we had 45 nests on the beach and not one of them been hit by a uh, pig. Uh, we found one nest that a guan had a go at it, but uh, we got rid of the guan and uh, no more nests were being degraded by uh, animals around. Between 2014 and 2016, more than 10,000 feral pigs were removed by WACTA members during aerial culling activities from an area of almost 900,000 square kilometres. Almost 400 of the turtle's predators were also removed using on-ground methods. Protecting the turtle nests is also about ensuring there's a sustainable food source for the people who've called the Western Cape York Peninsula home for tens of thousands of years. The turtle eggs are traditional tucker. Uh, green turtles is our traditional tucker. We eat it, but not the other species of turtle like olive ridley, flatbacks and that, we don't eat it, but the eggs we do. Um, it's a continuous tucker for us, yeah. So that's why we want to protect it. Um, try and educate the community, uh, not to take too much, but just 10, 10%, like just 10 out of the clutches. And yeah, and just cover up the nest and put a stick. It, it does have pretty strong cultural significance for these people. I think at the right time of the year, which is round about now when it cools off, um, the locals before they were moved into town to live um, sort of gravitated towards the beach because they knew it was time to uh, eat some turtle eggs and also eat some goannas who weren't far away at the time. So I make people get a stick and poke the nest, poke the nest for, find where the turtle egg is. But the whole people, they don't break a stick, they, they just fill the ground. Where the ground is warm, they were the tail leg. That's how, how, how I've been learned. And when, when we find a big mob nest, we don't take a lot. We just take nap where we can eat. That, we, because we save, save some them green turtle, mostly we eat green turtle and flat back. Traditional owners have cared for this country for tens of thousands of years and have strong cultural, spiritual and social ties to the marine turtles. They're keen to see the rangers continue their important work to protect them. In the early days they used to go up to Ren Island outside on the coral sea. Go out to Ren Island. Ren Island we used to like the like crab island. But Ren Island now is washed away. The sand coming up, they only the rock they come into to lay the egg. So we put a ranger to protect them thing. Protect them thing so we can get more turtle coming up. I remember when I was young, all the years, you know, we used to, you know, turtle used to be along there before, you know, before all this carbon gone through the beach and all this sort of thing. And then that one all sort of go away a few, few years back, you know all sort of disappeared and then only a couple of years back they just came back on again. Yeah, all the old people, they, they were looking after the country way before us, or before settlement, you know. So during that period till now, no one has been looking after it, good as how they used to be looking after it. So I guess what we're doing is trying, you know, our best to look after our country by looking after our animals and land and sea for the better for our children and the next you know, generation after that. Being a ranger is definitely not a nine to five job. It's hot and often dangerous work, which needs to be done at all times of the day and night. Yeah, we enjoy it, I enjoy it. And the thing we like, I like about it most is it's being up on the beach where it's peaceful, helping protect the turtles and make sure like so get back to their natural habitat. Yeah, big, yeah, it's a good thing to do. I uh, was the first ranger. We started this ranger training program in back in 88. 
My first job probably was down on the beach, uh, looking at most of the dunes, what were arising out of there. Found a, quite a few significant of burial sites unearthing because of the climate change. Some other jobs we do are fencing, um, feral animal control, um, looking after cultural sites, and um, yeah, and crop nest survey, um, even catching them, catching crocs. To be a ranger gives you opportunities, you know, in life and learn new stuff, meet new people. I do it because I, I care about the turtles. It's, I'm passionate about it and we want to sustain it for our future generation. That, that way they will, they will see an olive ridley, like now it's a dangerous species. Hopefully in the next 20, 30 years time they'll see it when they become rangers. Now, the rangers are passing on their skills to the next generation. Before I started um, uh, this ranger program, I had um, a ranger program thing in school. So I uh, had um, some experience during school and just it was really, really great for me. And um, yeah, I just loved it so much being out like on country and um, just you know, seeing like a lot of cool things. Well, the being my first time, it's um, it's really like good hearing from the older rangers and getting um, good advice and learning lots of new stuff, lots of new skills too. You got to take notice what, what we tell you what to do, because if you don't listen, you never learn. Yeah, you never learn nothing. You listen to us what we tell you. You do the right thing for us. We we'll look after you. The five member communities recently renewed their commitment to the Western Cape Turtle Threat Abatement Alliance, but they need your support to continue this crucial work. So these living relics of the past can continue to be a part of our future. Looking at this great big land The colourful scenery it makes me glad Follow us, follow